people, Ricky here from Behind the Bars TV. Hope you're all fit and well. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a lad that has been found dead in his cell at HMP Manchester, also known as Strange Wheels. So the lad I'm talking about is Gerard Thompson. So Thompson was originally from Norris Green. Um, he was arrested in 2004 after a man was tied up and tortured with a screwdriver over a cannabis farm. Um, obviously, he'd been around to rob somebody, um, tied them up, tortured them, and took the uh, took the grow. So that that's what he was sentenced for in 2014. Um, it says that he was also linked to a series of burglaries on other cannabis stash houses, as well as a plot to burgle luxury cars. So Thompson, the brother of murdered Strand gang member Joey Thompson, was jailed for 10 years for conspiracy to commit burglary and assault, occasioning actual bodily harm. He was eventually released on license in May 2019, but only remained free for a matter of months before being recalled to prison in January 2020 after being charged with theft. So he was back in prison on a recall, um, and he'd been plain, complaining about chest pains. And he'd been getting these for a couple of days, um, but in... He was initially sent to HMP Alt Course, where in September that year he reported suffering chest pain. Um, and Thompson underwent an ECG, which is like an electronic scan to detect heart rate and all that to see if anything was wrong with it. And everything seemed to appear normal. But he was transferred to Strange Ways um, on September the 25th of that year and told staff he was not taking illegal drugs and he was on prescribed medication. Um, but he, he was complaining again to the, the, the staff in Strange Ways about severe chest pain on the afternoon of November the 19th, 2020. Um, and he also told his partner on the phone that he wasn't, he couldn't feel his right leg the previous night. Obviously, when you're in prison, you're always on the phone to your partner if you're not very well telling them. But he'd been telling his partner the night before he was actually found dead. <clears throat> and it says that... Um, he was last seen alive by prison staff that evening when a female officer saw him lying on his bed watching TV. The following morning, a screw unlocked his cell at nine o'clock in the morning to ask if he needed a shower or wanted a rubbish removing from his cell because obviously that's what happens in the uh, like strange ways, a bit like Durham, it's like a remand prison. You don't get out for association much, but they do come round, like you see, in the morning um, and ask you if you want a, a shower or empty a bin. Not very often, but obviously if you're not getting association, they, uh, they do come around and ask if you want a shower. But obviously they went into his pad and seen that he was unresponsive. The prison officer stated that when she went to check on him, his left arm and his left leg was hanging out the bed and he was unresponsive. And she had looked at him to check if he was all right, looked at him and his eyes were half open. He was lying there, obviously he looked dead. So she shouted for um, code blue into the radio um, and all the staff come running on. The emergency staff got there and the look of them, they said that hey, um, they were trying to do CPR, the screws and all that, because that's what they've got to do, whether he looks unresponsive or dead. Um, they're trying to give him CPR and the nurses come in and she said to them, just stop what you're doing because obviously he's dead. The post-mortem examination was carried out by a pathologist to find out the cause of death and the pathologist noted that Thompson's heart was slightly enlarged, which could have increased the risk of abnormal heart rhythm. But toxicology reports also found traces of antipsychotic drug quetiapine, which the report noted can be subject to abuse, which the same prison subject to abuse. It doesn't. From my experience in prison, there was a lad next door to us. He was on um, a full tablet. I can't remember the milligram of it, but it was the highest milligram. And it used to knock him out because he had psychotic problems. Um, and some of the lads I couldn't sleep, I've known them to get a little bit of the tablet just to help them sleep in prison. And it's saying that in his body there was uh, traces of quetiapine, so he's maybe he's been having trouble sleeping because it says it wasn't on his record to be prescribed then. So if he's having trouble in sleeping, he's obviously took a little bit of that to try and help him sleep, um, which, like I say, like the lads do. He's not really, what you would say, abusing it because when you go to the doctors and you try and get help, medication, it's very rare that you get it. So the lads turn to other people to ask for support to try and help them sleep. And he's obviously done that, but it's saying that that could have been a bit of a trigger towards his death. But the pathologist concluded that his opinion was that the definitive cause of death 
could not be provided and he recorded a cause of death as unascertained. But when there was an investigation going on, they were saying that they were surprised and disappointed that at Strangeways, Manchester Prison, they, um, they had ceased to carry out morning welfare checks on prisoners. So on a morning, obviously, I mentioned where they come round at nine o'clock, but they're supposed to come round. When they look through your pads at seven, eight o'clock in the morning, they normally look through to see what something's a tap on your door and you just got to put your hand up or move so they know that you're obviously alive. At the time, they'd ceased doing that, but um, since Mr. Thompson's death, uh, Miss Manchester has reintroduced the checks. So since the, since his death, Manchester has reintroduced these checks um, as it's been made a recommendation that they do that. The reason why I made this video is because whilst I've been in prison, there's been quite a few deaths of lads having overdose of tablets. Obviously, this isn't what's happened in this instance, but there has been a lot of lads in prison where they've accidentally overdosed by taking tablets in prison. But unfortunately for Gerard, he died in prison, which is a bit of a shame because he was only 29 year old. Yeah, he had the rest of his life ahead of him. And this sort of death was, like you said, it's, it's been left unexplained, but could have been preventable. Maybe he could have, the screws had done the checks not properly. But um, yeah, leave that one there for now, people. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. Remember to like and subscribe. Take care.